Well, everybody, here we go. This is a very special episode of my Facebook Live. And uh, just a, a bit of um, housekeeping first. Um, if I have to take a call or whatever, because I'm in touch with the authorities all day long, or if an attorney or whoever wants to call me, I have my Mac open here. So if I get a call, I will have to go. And I'll continue this uh, at a later date. We don't have to rush. Also, I'm downstairs in um, the front room, in the drum room of the house, and if I get a call at the door, a delivery, um, the dogs all bark. So we have a couple of dogs, Roxanne and Bruno. So just uh, full disclosure on my end. Funny that, isn't it? Because that's what a big part of this uh, Facebook Live um, is about today. It's October 18th. Okay, and as everybody knows, and if you care to find out, go on my feed, all my pages, drummingacademy.com, rhythmsaint.com. Go on to their respective pages on Facebook to see the story about what has taken place for me and my family and all my drum belongings and my entire life's work uh, in Nashville. It's what I'm going to discuss today. So, a special mention today to Guitar Center. Guitar Center all across America at their headquarters, specifically Goodettsville Guitar Center in Nashville, where this is the core of what I want to talk about today and the core of what's going on with me, my belongings and my family right now. So October 2nd, I went down to Nashville to get my entire work, entire life's work, my whole drum collection, memorabilia and so on. The thief walked in to Guitar Center in Goodettsville and they bought a huge consignment of my drums and what I can tell you guys is uh, so far my experience between myself and my wife has been disgusting what we've received on the end of Guitar Center on the end of the phone and through email not on any occasion has anybody from Guitar Center reached out to me directly through my websites they have my phone I'm easy to get they should know that because they sold equipment with my name on it. Okay, so um, all of this can be challenged. So if they're on here now, I gave uh, California time to wake up. They're more than welcome to come on here and chime in. So um, what happened was the thief came into Goodettsville, walked into Guitar Center and said, Hey, I've got a ton of stuff. And I said, Oh, cool. Let's see it. Well, it's a lot. This guy came in with a Texas ID, with all custom drums, drums with my name on them, a huge uh, collection of cymbals, snares, pedals, it goes on and on. Cases, and Guitar Center chose not to do due diligence and bought it all in. Now, I've had a lot of people working on this for me, and I've done my own investigating. And Guitar Center, I've been calling your stores. I have people walking into your stores. I'm not here to educate you. I'm here to call you out in how I've been treated so far. And I want to tell the world, and I'm going to continue to tell the world, until you do the right thing. Make me satisfied and show me that you actually can be professional. Because what I've discovered so far is absolutely deplorable. Excuse me, and shameful. The way I've been treated. You know the thief, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody watching, and everyone who sees this later, because I'm just going to keep resharing this. I only live in a world of fact. All I wanted to do was go to Nashville and collect my life's work and bring it back and get back to my life. What has happened is I've been hospitalized twice because of the stress of this. Not on any occasion has anybody from Guitar Center reached out to me. And I only got a call back once. Let's take you through it now. So when I discovered that it was all sold to Guitar Center in Goodersville, I called them and I got Robert Bear. And initially he was, I'm the manager, I'm Robert Bear, what can I do for you? I introduced myself and told him who I was, who I was in the music industry and what had taken place. And from that exact moment, ladies and gentlemen, all he did was push back. He didn't say, oh my word, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, well, okay, let's get some details. They all want to talk about process and channel and protocol. They didn't observe 
any of that because this wouldn't be happening I wouldn't be on Facebook live and all these platforms sharing the truth right now on October 18th here we are all these days later I reported it as soon as I got back to that I drove 14 hours and I came back of course I was sick uh, not realizing how unwell I was going to be I didn't know I was going to be hospitalized and as soon as I could I called this store oh I remember all your gear smirking on the phone I remember all your gear because it was a lot now listen somebody feels like you're tiresome or they want to come on here and push back I am not padding anything out for effect I'm a hyper detailed guy which is now a problem for you guitar center because I have everything documented I have the minutes of all the calls so don't call me out on any of my details do not do that I'll give you that free advice because I'm a precision guy it pleases me to be detailed and you guys took in custom drum kits snares pedals that are one-offs one of 500 one of 40 Custom Phil Collins drum kit you had since November 22 with not only my name on it and it's sitting over there, my signature on it. Okay? So you've a lot to answer for. And not one of you has called me in all these days. Yeah, you're parading around your legal corridors and stuff like that. Where's your empathy? I'm a human being, I'm a drummer, I'm a family man. But this is the way. You have chosen to treat me and you're not getting away with it I refuse to be treated like this you took in all my gear and you peddled it through your store like a flea market you didn't think to look at the Kenny Aronoff snare signed by the great Kenny Aronoff who's very kind to me incidentally engraved by the great John Aldrich another great guy my name my signature and my tattoo engraved on the outside of that snare drum and you bought it in. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what they did. This guy with a Texas ID walked into, walked into a Nashville store and said, I all this gear. And they broke up the payment. Guitar Center, explain to me why you broke up the payment. $3,600 for two Stuart Copeland kits and a snare drum. We'll pay you that. You broke it all up. Why? I already know. You have a lot of explaining to do. And I'm going to keep saying it. Nobody has been in touch with me. Nobody has reached out to even say, we're looking at this, we're aware of it. Oh, the industry's getting in touch with me because I'm known. I'm getting private messages, I'm getting emails, texts. I'm even getting photographs of other people's circumstances. But we'll get to that. You bought in all my gear for nothing and you sold it for nothing. And this Robert Bergoy, the way he speaks down to me, oh, he's back in work today. And I'm supposed to wait for all of you guys to decide, what are we going to do about this? You're doing nothing about it. There's a police report. The Nashville commissioner called me yesterday. And I've just communicated with the mayor of Nashville today. I mean, you guys better sharpen your pencils. Because you might be a corporation, but I'm someone of fortitude and integrity. And as I said in my last feed, I'm also Irish and I've come a long way and I couldn't have done it without my family in Ireland I couldn't have done it without my students I can't do it without everybody so you're not dealing with the average man you just need to understand that and I don't go away and I should be resting myself because of the unanimous stress of this but I'm not going to rest and I have people after people all through the middle of the night guitar center I have people messaging me and I can provide it so don't start getting cute I can provide everything I'm talking about. I have photographs, I have labels for every piece of equipment that was taken on me. So let's go back to the Phil Collins kit, guys. The Phil Collins kit was sitting at Guitar Center since November 22, minimum. Robert Baird tells me that it wasn't part of the buy-in because they couldn't identify the kit. But my name is inside every shell. That kit was made for me by a very special man who has great standing in the community here in Pennsylvania and he did it as a kind gesture to me and I had people who are involved with Phil Collins kindly help me design that drum kit so every piece of equipment has a story every piece of equipment has been touched by other great people so it's, all the equipment is undoubtedly mine so this thief walks in and they buy it all and peddle it 
and put it online. Not doing due diligence. Guess what? Let's fast forward. My Stuart Copeland kit is sitting in San Diego right now. I got a True Guitar Center over a decade ago. It was a special arrangement for me to have it. And it was on display in Manhattan for several weeks before I moved to the States. Stuart signed the front head, all of that stuff. You guys have my Stuart Copeland signature shell pack right now at your San Diego store. And nobody will tell me when I'm going to get it. But if I buy a guitar off you for $100, you're going to give me tracking. I call about tracking to a Goodlettsville store and they push me back and they won't tell me. The man who bought it from your store paid $4,000 for it. And he found the story and he said, I want to do the right thing. I feel bad. And he returned it to your store. And here I'm getting pictures of it on your store floor. One of 50 kits in the world, police blue sparkle custom paint finish, and it's on your carpet in front where people are dragging stones in. What sort of way is that to treat an instrument? And you call yourself a musical instrument retailer, a leader. You're not. You're a glorified pawn shop. And that's what I've discovered. And again, Guitar Center, get in touch with me. Come on here live and debate with me in front of the whole world. I've dedicated my whole life to this. So I'm a detailed guy. You might only be interested in profit, but I'm interested in people. People is my business. Drumming is my business. Passion is my business. So not one person from Guitar Center has emailed me, communicated with me, and at the store, they never call me back. But I got one call back because I called, I called, uh, I called and I got a Kyle, okay? I got a Kyle. What do you do there, Kyle? Uh, I'm operations manager. If another person tells me they're a manager, I'm going to lose it. Okay, Kyle. Well, this is who I am. And I'm looking for the status of my Stuart Copeland kit. Oh, 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 yeah, I heard about, I'm aware of the situation. Yeah, you are all aware and nobody's doing the right thing. So just tell me the tracking, please. Uh, I can't. And so let me get this right. There's a store in your franchise in California and you just can't, they're awake now. You can't call them and ask them, when am I getting my stolen belongings back? Because the kind gentleman who bought it without knowing it was stolen, contacted me directly and returned it. You guys gave me his four grand back and he sent me the pictures. I've just left, there's your kit. And you can't tell me when I'm getting it back. My belongings, my drum kit, the drum kit that I earned, the drum kit that I bought from you guys over a decade ago, you can't tell me. But if I buy a set of headphones now today, and believe me, people are doing stuff for me, you'll give them tracking. Thanks for your custom, it's on its way. But you can't tell this gentleman. And not only that, let's be honest here for a minute. I work in the industry. You can't tell me when I'm gonna get my drums. You better tell me today you have today to tell me when I'm getting my Stuart Copeland signature drum shell pack. All the shells are gone. Because the thief stole them and sold everything to you. And you peddled my belongings, my life's work, through your shop. Without doing due diligence. And you broke up the payment and I have it all. I have it all. I have all the details. What have you got? All you've got is silence. I'm just one guy. You've over 200 stores across America. You don't intimidate me at all. You've had the opportunity. It's now October 18th. You've had 10 days plus to do the right thing. This guy, Blake, and I'm not gonna say his last name, he kindly did the right thing. And you gave me his four grand back in 30 seconds, but you won't give me my belongings back. How dare you? And how dare you give the thief more respect than you're giving me? So now, Guitar Center, none of you have gotten back to me. Let's talk about this word management. Let's talk about, you know, you being corporate. Let's talk about you being a multiple retailer. Now, one of you has reached out to me. I emailed Reed Williams, who is, oh, guess what, everyone? He's Nashville manager. Nashville has a lot of stores. I'm in Pennsylvania. There's a lot of stores. And as it happens, I've worked in quite a few stores. And guess what, Guitar Center? I was one of the judges for the drum off in Manhattan. I've given you business for over 10, 10 years. 
So Reed Williams couldn't find himself for any good reason to email me back. Explain yourself, sir. District manager. Now let me guess, you're district manager. Listen, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I understand business. I have lots of students who are great business people. So being business and being, being successful is not exclusive. You couldn't find yourself to be professional, have some fortitude, have some integrity, and email the guy back. I didn't even get another response. Reed Williams, district manager for Nashville. But what do you do, Reed? Let me guess. You know, you go in and out of the stores, you talk to these pups who talk down to me. I'm a high functioning professional. I'm sure you've Googled me, researched me. Not everyone's gonna like me, but I help a lot of people and I represent my brands eloquently. And all my brands are helping me right now, unlike you guys. But you bought in my equipment, sold it for nothing, and made money. And Harbin the Thief, who used a Texas ID to do this deal with you in Nashville. And you couldn't be bothered to email this man back Apart from, I'm a family man, what's happening to this family? You have the audacity to offer lessons in these places. Oh, oh you're, meanwhile, you're shaking people down at the front counter. And you have these pups calling themselves managers talking down to me. Talking down to me. Robert Bear, district manager, Reed Williams, because I presume you go in and train them and talk about where are we at this quarter and all this stuff. You're not going to lecture me on business. I know what it's like to get up every day and make $5. Maybe turn it into 10 and give half it away. So you're not going to lecture me in business. You're not going to lecture me in how one should conduct themselves. Certainly, I've navigated through the whole music industry, and it's not easy. And when I feel more fortunate than others, you know what I do, Reed? I give stuff away and I help people. I coach people all year for nothing. What do you do? What do you do, sir? Because you can call yourself whatever you like on LinkedIn and stuff, but you're not actually doing it, are you? And as for the rest of you sitting watching this in your little boardroom and your cappuccinos in California, let's see it. Let's see. Let's see your minerals, as we say at home. Because you have no front. All you're doing is hiding away from me. And what you should be doing is investigating where all my gear is gone, calling those customers and giving it back to me and then making me happy. But you've decided to ignore me and get your pups to talk down to me. Manager, give me a break. These guys couldn't run a bath, but you know what they're able to do? They're able to run a credit card. They can run a background check. They're able to pedal my gear for nothing. $3,600 for two custom kits. One's a one-off, one is one of 50 in the world. And my Kenny Aronoff snare. There's $3,600. How dare you? With my name on it. Then you don't know what to do with the Phil Collins kit and it's sent back to me. Guys, in unmarked boxes, no paperwork, no anything. District manager is it? I see. Managers, is it? Really? I've been calling your stores. Didn't even need to hide my accent. Not, not one of them has followed protocol. Hey, I've got a five-piece kit. What do you give me for it? Oh yeah, just bring it in man, we'll give you something for it. You're a disgrace in how you operate. You're a disgrace, you're a pawn shop at best. And I'm infuriated because you've left this man who's had his life work stolen and channeled through your store. You made money and you haven't got the fortitude or even professionalism to get in touch with me. You sent me the Phil Collins kit last minute, it's damaged on the inside. You just couldn't prep a salad, you know that? The way this was sent to me. And somebody else sent me a picture of one of your kits that you sold and the box was destroyed and the tom holder went out through the side. What are you doing over there? You're definitely making money. So Reed, next time you have your little huddle, where, what are we looking like, guys? I'll tell you what you're looking like. Sesame Street is what you're looking like. Prove me different. Come on here live right now and debate with me. I have photographs and data for all my equipment that's gone. I've got people who are struggling themselves attempting to send me equipment. I've got my sponsors gathering to send me stuff so I can get back to my job. You guys don't care about this. Lessons is it? You've got some young kids back there learning to play guitar and drums and bass. Meanwhile, you're selling stolen gear out front. You're an absolute 
disgrace and the way I've been treated is not going away. Anytime feel like you want to come in here, because I'll debate with any of you. You know you're out of order. You're now part of a police investigation. You're part of an insurance investigation. The police commissioner called me. I had communications with the Lord Mayor in Nashville and it doesn't go on. You're ignoring me and I don't get ignored by anybody. I don't get to go away. Do you understand? And you know what you did? You actually sold my daughter's inheritance. You know that? You handled her inheritance and you stole it. You sold and peddled my son's heirlooms. That's what you've done. That's what your legacy is. I know what my legacy is. Drummond Academy, Rhythm Saint, Engage the Universe. I'm sure you've done your research on me. Will you need to do more research on me? My Drummond Academy's logo is based on Ricky Lawson, a fine man, and I know he did some stuff at Guitar Centre. And if he was here today, he'd absolutely be furious with all of you. And we spoke about how we should all be in it together. And this is the way you guys, Guitar Centre, have chose to treat me. Robert Baird talking down to me. Kyle the other day, operations manager. Operations manager? Are you, are you, are you really serious with these labels? Really? Oh, if you, if you want to find, I've been told, if you want to find the status of my belongings, I have to talk to the authorities or Robert. Now, Robert will coast into work today and he won't call me. And I'm supposed to sit here in Pennsylvania and wait for my precious belongings to, to come back to me. In fact, to even be told when I'm getting it back. And everybody and his friend touching my equipment and there's no doubt it's my equipment I have the logs of the red heads I put on it. I know when the last project was I have I have the codes on the hoops and from the boxes and the guys at Evans know this I have details for everything I own I have every label and tag of all the hardware and every drum you just took it in and you just sold it oh we didn't buy the Phil Collins kit. It wasn't part of the buy-in, Robert Bear, manager from Guitar Center, said. I said, is that right? How long have you had it, Robert? We've had it, oh, like November. November 22. And you couldn't do some research. Who's Aaron Kennedy and who owns this drum kit? And guess what, everybody? When it arrived, I didn't get track until literally there was a knock on the door. In two crap boxes. In fairness... It wasn't wrapped too bad, actually. It wouldn't be by my standards, but there's some damage on the inside. And I'll always be honest. I don't see so far any damage on the outside. I haven't played them yet. I've no stands. I've inspected the snare, so it doesn't seem to be any damage on the outside. But on the inside, they're damaged. Great. That's, that's just awesome. Brilliant. But guess what, everybody? When the packages arrived, look at this nonsense. Somebody else has drunk. Somebody else's drum. What is this? This is not mine. This is not mine. This arrived in amongst it. And immediately I have videos and pictures. I said, Robert, what is this? This isn't mine. I don't want somebody's belongings. Is somebody out there and they're missing this? It may not matter to me, but this might matter a lot to somebody else. It certainly doesn't matter to Guitar Center. They don't care. They just want to get your gear in and flag it. But what they didn't account for is the unanimous detail I have on my equipment. So, when I tried to talk, look at this thing, look at it, it's not even mine. I didn't even want to touch it, I feel bad because it's somebody else's belongings, drum or no drum. Like, what is this? I've never even owned such a thing. Oh, uh, what is it? Is it a drum that was cut down? What are you asking me for, Robert? This is not my belongings. So somebody out there, if you just want to share, and I'll send pictures of it, it has quite an old Evans head on it it's from quite a few years ago. I know if this thing's been sitting, but this says a lot to me about Guitar Center. Where's the, where's the attention to detail? I'm screaming down the phone about my equipment. And not at any time would Robert Bear, manager Guitar Center in Goodettsville, would stay on the phone or organize a Zoom, or I can walk through the door, it makes no difference to me, and we go through the list. Here's what was stolen. Here's what I know is gone. What did you buy in? Didn't want to do that. Now they'd have to furnish the, 
uh, authorities with that. That's fine, but you didn't want to do that. Why such a pushback, Robert? Why wouldn't you want to work with a guy? Oh, uh, oh yeah, I remember it was a lot of gear, and I remember the Stuart Copeland ride because it was different. Yeah, different. Stuart played it on the Letterman show, and it was given to me. Different. The, the ride is blue, for God's sake. So we went from, oh, well, what I could do is I could go to receipts and trace the sales. I went, well, that, that could be encouraging. And then in an email, I'm getting, yeah, this will be next to impossible. Then he's saying on the phone to me, you know, this was a year ago, right? Yeah, Robert, I know your brain's the size of a bird's, but you know, they solve crimes from centuries ago. You know you can solve crimes from decades ago. So a year, come on. So they don't call me back. Guitar Center has never reached out to me. I want you all to know that. This is, this is where we're at. And it's not just about me. This Facebook Live's about me. I want my gear back. Today I want to know where's my Stuart Copeland kit. Where's it right now and when is it coming here? And they're not telling me. If you buy a cable off them for 10 bucks and they ship it free, they're going to give you tracking and they just won't do that. So they're not wanting to do the right thing. So I am going to scream blue murder for me and my family until I get justice. And I'm prepared to expose anybody who doesn't participate, is dismissive of me, talks down to me and won't cooperate with me and my investigating officers, our own private investigation and the insurance. As somebody's got to pay for this and it's not going to be me. I've already paid with my health. I've already paid with stress. What I'm bringing on top of my family is unconscionable in terms of it's not their fault because it's coming from somewhere else. Life storage have a whole other battle on their hands because that's an inside job. But I'll make the connection because I'm not going to sleep on this. So Guitar Centre can sit around and try and have their own internal crisis management. But nobody has gotten in touch with me and said, we are sorry. We are working on it. We are going to do our best. What can we do for you? That's where we're at. And they're welcome to come on here and have a go and chime in with me, but... They're not going to, right? Talk to the authorities or the other manager if you want to know about your drunk kit. It's my property. It's my belongings. How dare you? You're not going to tell me what to do, not how to think or how to act, or certainly how I should behave about my own belongings. You don't get to do that. Why do you get to do that? You don't. That's right. That's right. And there are people in the industry that I advise seven days a week and as it happens, they kind of like me and they kind of trust me. Unlike you guys now, I'm trusted in the industry. Do your research. If you can come up with something, I'll embrace it. If I walked in there and my credit card wouldn't swipe, you'd say too bad. Everybody around the world, Guitar Centre needs to know that when you travel and you come in here as a musician, or not a musician, maybe you want to buy a musician a gift, they forget that there's a global market here too. There's people that travel and go in and use Guitar Centres. I'm in Pennsylvania, and I'm about to roast all the guitar centers in Pennsylvania. I'm about to roast them all, because I want to advise musicians, young and old, established musicians, veterans, pros. It doesn't matter whether you're a professional like me. You don't have to be a professional to be a fan of music, passion for music. Why would you go to, through the doors of this place when, when you know this is what's going on? going on. I've got drummers, guitarists, keyboard players, singers, producers contacting me all the time. I keep having to, I'm sorry, check my some messages there now. I keep having to check, people are contacting me. Now I can screenshot them and guitar center, you want to invite me to your boardroom and I'll do a presentation? I don't bullshit. I'm not bullshitting. This is real. And actually, this is my life. This is my real life. My drum life from age of six or seven, was taken. I was left with scraps, and not one of you has gotten in touch with me. It's actually disgusting. Not one person from Guitar Center. And then I had these guys talking on the phone to me, telling me they're, they're managers, and they don't want to work with me. 
You shouldn't have bought my gear in for nothing and sold it for nothing and now you're not helping me. And I swear, if I don't get details about my Stuart Copeland kit today, it's, it won't be regrettable for me because I'm just a straight up guy who helps everybody and wants my equipment back and wants to be seen and wants to be heard. And this Guitar Center brand, this retail chain is a disgrace. And what I've discovered everybody in the last several days alone, I mean, this is going on since October 2nd. Guy, Robert Bear more or less told my wife to shut up. Then he says to me, let's keep it business. Hold on here, man, let me get this right. My stuff was stolen, a guy walks in, you can't believe what you're seeing. You get fucking nothing for it. And you're telling me, someone at my level of success and trust within several industries, not just music, you're telling me to keep a business? You didn't keep a business. You didn't even keep a child's play. You couldn't even cover yourself. You bought all my life's work, custom equipment, with some with my name on them, and peddled them out there, and you have decided to form an attitude with me. You must be out of your fucking mind. In fact, you are. You're an amateur. Okay, you're a hack at best. And your store that you manage, that Reed pops in, that did, remember, don't forget everyone, district manager, he pops in every now and then, has their little confabs, how we doing? Yeah, yeah, it was a, wasn't a great Saturday. Okay, give me a break, people, will you? So you didn't account for me, you didn't account for how determined they are and relentless. You want to start sharpening your pencils and you better start from today showing me respect because I have all the data, I have all the information, I have all the evidence and you guys are doing nothing. Zero. And everybody needs to know it. Whether you buy cut Guitar Center and stuff like that, that's entirely your own, um, it's your own prerogative, okay? But what I will say is everything I'm telling you is true. Anybody wants it, there's going to be a dossier on it, there's going to be a documentary about it. I have other film crews that have contacted me, want to talk to me, a few newspapers, a magazine or something in Nashville hit me up. It's, it, it's amazing, but it's a lot because I'm doing this all day and so is Nicole. She's upstairs running her business. She's upstairs running a team. She's upstairs running the house. She's upstairs running everything else with this. Oh, we can do it. We're out. We're Kennedys. We're well able for this. But I'm, there's no, I'm sorry, the call. There's no more. There's no more patience. There's no more anything. Guitar Center, you're a disgrace. And as for upper management or whatever you like to call yourselves, I can't be bothered with that. These titles and stuff that are meaningless because you don't actually do what you say. So it must be great to be on minimum wage and be called a manager. But somebody has to make me satisfied very soon. Because I'm telling you now, I don't go away. This doesn't go away. And you can do what you like. You can try and do some sort of pushback or reverse of behaviors, but it's all there. It's all there. You bought in my gear for nothing, and you flogged it for nothing, and you don't care. You don't care. Well, I'm gonna tell you what my grandmother said back home in Ireland, and she was a sweetheart, and loved music. And it's because of her, I think this. Those who don't care can be made to care. Do you understand? Guitar Center, do you understand? So everybody, if you want any details, just get in touch with me. I'll send them across to you. Um, names, dates, everything. You know, I'll put my name out there. Reed Williams, Robert Bear, Cull, whatever your name is. Couldn't give me your last name. At Goodettsville, you know, headquarters and Guitar Center. You just ignore me. You're an absolute fucking disgrace. You're a disgrace. Oh. Did he swear? Oh, that's shocking. That's, God, that's, that doesn't seem like a gentleman to me. That doesn't seem to be the conduct of a man with any sort of reference. Yeah, your mind. I can stand up every day in my own shoes, every day, knowing who I am. Can you? 
because you get up every day and you're grabbing some of this. You're grabbing some of this because I know. Because I'm making sure you can see it. So if I say fuck, oh, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Does, is that a little bit tight? Does that not fit? Does that not fit? Because I've got great people in my life, great drummers, great artists, some who depend on me and I depend on them because I'm inspired by them. But you're a disgrace guitar centre and everybody else out there, whether you boycott them, whatever it is you want to do, I mean, that's your journey, you know. But I need to share this story and it's going to be shared even more later today and the next few days. There's, there's big plans and some of the plans are not even mine. People are getting in touch with me. Uh, because of how I've been treated, how my equipment was treated. You can trace all this stuff back to when somebody even thought of making it. The Kenny Arnoff snare. Kenny's a wonderful guy. He's actually been, he has been great to me. So Guitar Center, I'm not coming for you. I don't need to come for you. You're already out there, failing, failing deplorably. Deplorably. I get up every day and I switch everything on and I know I'm a person of credence and fortitude. I have morality and I have ethics. But remember, you handled my daughter's inheritance. You have peddled my son's heirlooms. That's how you treated all my custom equipment. You peddled all my custom Pisces and Pisces signatures. Everything. You just peddled them out there like it's nothing. How dare you? And this hurts for me because I care about every bit of it. But what you didn't account for is I am fucking relentless, relentless. And unlike you, I actually have a lot of people that care about me. People of influence, people of talent, people are just amazing people. And unlike you, I'm getting people that haven't had their paycheck yet and they're offering me equipment. They haven't had their paycheck this week yet and they want to send me stuff to help me so I can do my job. That's unbelievable. But yet you, corporation, can't get in touch and just do the right thing. And find this man's equipment. You can't even offer a formal apology. Well, the fucking game is up. I'm not playing anymore. And I'm going to keep shouting your name negatively until I'm made happy. Until my family can settle. We are living in pure stress here. Pure duress because of what you've done. The authorities are going to do what they do, and they should, and God knows I'm helping them. But let me tell you, Aaron Kennedy Rhythm Saint doesn't go away. And you forget, I have hundreds of students, hundreds of coaching clients. I mightn't have the money you guys have, but I have what's real. I have what it takes to influence people to do the right thing. You don't care about music. You're a glorified pawn shop. So if you feel like finding your minerals today, you'll get in touch, but you won't. And I'm going to keep shouting it. This is what you deserve. This is what you deserve. You don't get to get away with this. And I found out you've done it multiple times to other people. People are contacting me from all over the country. So there's no bullshit here. It's just pure unadulterated fact. You want the facts? Let's exchange facts. I guarantee you my facts are going to checkmate yours. Because I don't want to live in anything else but truth. You haven't even the manners to get in touch with me. Not Reed Williams. Robert Bear probably won't call me back today. I want to know where my Stuart Copeland signature shells are. All my hardware is gone. It's all gone. You sold it all. You bought it in at least. All his symbols Stuart gave me. Everything amazing that Pisces has done for me. Evans drum heads. Hundreds of drum heads, 28 SKB cases, it goes on and on. People are sick of hearing me talk about my list. And I got people who don't have a lot trying to help me. You're an absolute disgrace. You shouldn't be putting that sort of onus on people out there who are trying to do their own music career. And I'm helping them. So you want to quit those lessons now. You want to shut that down because you're a disgrace. Because Drumming Academy is far superior than anything that Guitar Centre could ever do. Because we personalise lessons. And we care about the individual to make them the drummer they want to be. We guide them to product. We guide them to conduct. 
I also coach in Drumming Academy. What do you do? Oh, process, channels, whatever. Give me a break. You're a fucking disgrace. He swore again. This guy swears a lot. Yeah. You know what? I wasn't going to. But I've been hospitalized twice. I've been super stressed. My poor family is going through hell with this in Ireland and here. So you know what? You deserve it. So somebody today, Guitar Centre, better tell me when I'm getting my Stuart Copeland signature kit. I'm sure he's not that impressed either. I'm sure he's not that impressed. Why would he have his name dragged around? One of, one of the most amazing artists and drummers ever in history. A hero of mine. I earned to be behind those drums. I earned to own them. I bought them through you. <laughs> you know? Somebody better get in touch with me. Somebody better do the right thing. It better happen today. Everybody, I want to say also, I don't think I said it at the start because I'm getting so focused. And I got to get back now and check my emails and call attorneys and all sorts of stuff. I want to say to everybody else except Guitar Center, certainly Goodensville and headquarters, a sincere thank you uh, to all of you. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be me if uh, I couldn't be at least always positive no matter what's going on. Ricky Lawson who played with Michael Jackson and Phil Collins, Whitney Houston, Steely Dan. Look him up if you don't know who he is. Great friend to me, mentor of mine, dear friend. Uh, Drummond Academy's logo was a tribute to him. I got to tell him that in 2009, which is awesome. Ricky would call me every Friday, and no matter where he was, on tour, studio, wherever. And sometimes he'd put the artists on Skype to me, it was funny. But I would always compliment him and say, you're great and you inspire me. And I'd say, well, Aaron, I'm just trying to make you proud. That's what he would say to me every Friday. This is a man of principle and beautiful heart. And that's why he was successful. Also, a fellow, uh, fellow Paiste artist. And I remember getting signed with Paiste, who are wonderful, and, and uh, getting my first allocation of symbols, which is part of this theft. You know, it hurts a lot. You know, uh, my teacher's first hi-hats. No, excuse me. My teacher's hi-hats from my first lesson. It hurts, you know. Um, stolen. Part of this buy-in. Guitar Centre bought them in and sold them. Somebody else has my teacher's hi-hats that I have my first lesson on. You know, it's tough, man. You know, it's tough. But keeping it positive, you know, uh, I remember getting my first allocation of Pisces and and uh, Ricky and I were talking about it and I told him what I was getting. And, um, you know, he agreed, you know. Um, uh, it actually made me a beautiful, which is gone, 20 inch bright ride, my favorite ride in the whole world. I mean, obviously Stuart's ride was very precious to me because I got it from him and whatever, but my go-to ride was the 20 inch bright ride. Just an amazing uh, ride. As it happens, a student in Ireland, I told him to go buy Paiste and he found one new unsold in France. And he's kindly offered to, uh, to sell it to me. So we'll try and uh, figure that out. But yeah, uh, clearly I'm very annoyed. Clearly I'm frustrated. Uh, all of those things. Um, haven't been too well. Get, getting better on medication. You know, uh, I got an ulcer out of this and something else I can't pronounce. Um, but I'm fighting it and fighting it. And hey, before I forget, not changing gears, but if anybody knows who owns this drum, it is not mine. And I really hate to think that somebody, you know, owns this and they're missing it. I, I have no interest in it. And certainly it's stolen or whatever. It came with the full Collins kit. This is insanity, everyone. Insanity. But keeping it positive, you know, I, I had said to Nicole uh, when I called her from Nashville when this happened, I'm never playing again. I'm never playing again. And in hindsight, thinking of that, I'm so busy, so many students, and uh, I'm working with a local band, and they're great guys, and they've become brothers. I can't, uh, it's hard to imagine not doing all the things I get to do, and the plans I have for different things over the coming months, because I'm usually nearly six months ahead. 
I'm getting my mojo back. Uh, I'm not playing that well, playing okay. Um, I'm I'm down to <laughs> I'm down to one pair of sticks. You, you you kind of say how is that possible? Well, I thought on the second I was going to get hundreds of pairs of sticks I had in storage. I know it sounds all very boohoo, but guys, never ever let anyone tell you you can't do something, and never let never let anyone bully you or push you back, especially if it's not your fault. Never, always be strong, always be strong, no matter what. And I am no pushover. And every day I feel better, every day I'm getting a bit stronger. So, Guitar Center, watch out. Any drummers watching, just keep drumming, you know, find your own journey and make good choices. Um, yeah, okay, so I could be criticized for my choice. I thought uh, hiring this, renting this incredibly beautiful and brand new storage facility with touch code, access control was going to be secure and it wasn't. And then the thief brought the stuff into Guitar Center. So there's multiple avenues here that have taken on my gear. I didn't think I'd ever overcome it. I mean, there are some things I probably won't. I don't even know yet what stuff of Mason's has gone, drums and things, because he drums a bit. It's hard, it's tough. And I meant what I said to Guitar Center. They peddled my daughter's inheritance. And they sold my son's heirlooms. That's what they did. And they haven't gotten in touch with me and showed any sort of solidarity, empathy, sympathy. I'm getting indirect messages through people, but that, that doesn't count for shit. That doesn't count for anything. But do your own drum, drum journey. Um, I am grateful to have the Phil Collins kit back, even though all the stands are missing. We'll figure it all out. There is worse things in life, right? There are people, I, you know, I can't help feeling that somewhat guilty. There are people on either side of the planet going through terrible, uh, terrible stuff right now. And I will be sharing like a Red Cross thing and a, a, a Amnesty International thing because I do want people to think about that too. But this is my thing right now and my family. That's, you know, that's what we're going through. So I want to still remain positive and still let you know that I'm, avail I'm available for coaching, for lessons, but more importantly, for an L chat and, and, and just a little bit of encouragement. And you know you can get in touch with me if you just want to know what gear to get. I can tell you where not to go to get it. But, uh, you know, guys, I'm not laughing, I'm crying. This is really hard. And aside from the cold, we're not sleeping. Uh, poor Mason's, I don't know how I'd describe him. I'm not pulling at your heartstrings. He's he's doing good, and then he has a few moments because he does know what's going on. He's now eight, and some of the stuff he says and, and stuff like that. I appreciate all the support, guys. I do I, I do appreciate all the support. Never never ever think that. I know I'm like a perpetual sharer. I just like to share my life on 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 them um, on Facebook because I do appreciate my life so much. And then also I kind of think, well, one day I'll be dust, and I hope that. Facebook will, will say, well, here's a here's a canister of Aaron's life. Uh, you can have it. That's actually kind of some of my mad theory of sharing so much because it's a great platform for my friend, my family at home to be able to see what I'm doing because I can't time zones and stuff. Uh, but I do appreciate you all. And honestly, like the post and, and the news and everyone helped me. It's helping. But uh, Guitar Center need to do the right thing by this drummer by this artist and also by my family so we'll see you know so say at home we'll see if they find their minerals but again to quote my beautiful grandmother from Rat Drum in County Wicklow Ireland those who don't care can be made to care and she was a sweet lady you know I don't know if I class myself as so sweet but constantly determined constantly relentless I'm getting my mojo back slowly, musically. I've been teaching since Wednesday last week. I got back at it. You know, not playing that well, not feeling it that great, really. Um, I haven't, I haven't been able to play the Phil Collins kit yet, but I'm so I am inspired, but I'm not, I'm not playing that. I'm not playing that well because I'm just not feeling too well, and I don't, I don't feel it. You know, if you're a musician, you, you guys will know what I mean. But all the support really helps. Anybody wants to know anything, anybody has experienced anything like this with Guitar Center, uh, anything like that, please get in touch. I'm emphatic when it comes to detail.
I am, I am insane. And I'm doing my own investigation along with Nicole. And what we're discovering is, uh, it's pretty shocking, uh, really. And so, um, here's the good things, and here's to trying to remain, no, is actually remaining positive, not trying. Have to be positive all the time, no matter what's, no matter what's going on, you have to keep punching. And remember, when you're punching, you're not just trying to make contact with what's in front of you, okay? You're trying to go absolutely through it. Always through and forward, momentum, you know? And that's what I live by. And again, in close, I can't thank all of you enough. Please share this. I think it's valuable and invaluable. I think it's important. I think it's righteous. I think it's just. So please take time to share this. Um, I'm seeing guys from Ireland and wonderful drummers, even uh, old friend of my, my sister Neve, Caroline's on there and Shane. It's difficult to always shout out to people and I have the computer going here. But you know, every, everyone from my past knows me and they saw me working my way up or along with all of this. I really care about music. I really care about drumming. If, and Guitar Center, let me calm down with you just a little bit, even though you don't deserve it. This is a personal message from me to you, Aaron Kennedy, Rhythm Saint. This is not just wood and metal to me. It's not just about money to me. If it was that, I'd have one drum kit. I'd charge everyone tons. I'd take a tour and I wouldn't be around for my family. But everything that was stolen on me and brought through your shop and sold has a story. And it's not just me in that story. It's my son. It's my wife. Nicole really cares about this stuff. She may not be a drummer. She loves music. She loves drumming. And there isn't a single hesitation for me to live as a drummer any way I want. That's how amazing she is. So everything you took in and sold has a story. I had the sticks that Vic Firth gave me. Let's, let's break it down before I go. I had the sticks, the last allocation of sticks that Ricky Lawson got. I had, when I signed with Vic Firth, stuff that Vic himself gave me. I think, I don't know, my Vic Firth award for teaching might be gone. Mason's um, godfather, uh, give him a shout out. Kevin Doyle, back home in Ireland, owns a store in Wexford in Ireland. Gory Ireland, making music. Sent Mason beautiful sticks. Mason Brendan Kennedy, we gave him my dad's name. Beautifully framed, I think it's gone. Do you know how heartbreaking that is, Guitar Center? That's not your fault. And it's very likely you didn't handle that stuff. But the drums, the cymbals, the pedals, my jewelers pedals. I'm the guy for jewelers in North America. What do you think it was like contacting Kevin, the in innovator, the inventor, my friend? Hey, listen, these pedals are gone because I want to be honest. And he's been fabulous. Another great operator. You could learn from him. All the Pisces, the first Pisces I ever got. Stuart's hi-hats. You know, the stuff he used on the Letterman show when I was so lucky to work with him. Everything has a story. And so what you're doing is you're tarnishing my story by not caring about it. This is not just metal, wood and money to me. It's way beyond that. And I like to think of my teaching and playing or whatever, the things I do, I can inspire others to say, one day you'll have a beautiful drum kit, one day you'll be in a band. So you've lost sight of the original owners of Guitar Center, what their vision was. And I've stayed at my vision with Drumming Academy, become the drummer you want to be, you know? It's not about who's better, it's how can I help you. I teach amazing drummers who can do some really fantastic things. I'm just retuning them and helping them do other things. You're supposed to be in music retail. You're supposed to hand over dreams to people. You're supposed to encourage them and then tell them to come back in. When they get better, they go to the next level. But there is no level. So that's a personal message from me to Guitar Center. It's not just wood and metal to me. It's very personal and that's why it hurts. And that's why professionally you've messed up and you made a big mistake doing what you did and it's not fair on this man and everybody else you do it to. But everybody else, I love you lots. That's genuine. I really appreciate all the love and all the messages. I'm really trying to do my best and figure out how to say thank you to you individually. It's just a lot, you can imagine. I, I run out of battery on my phone, I run out of battery on my Mac, but, uh, but from Nicole and I, 
and Paige Mason. We can't thank you enough because they feel the support and they can see sometimes my morale is boosted and hopefully there'll be a result today on my Stuart Copeland kit. I can't tell you how much. I love all my gear, right? Um, I do, of course, I feel very lucky. Um, Stuart Copeland was a, a hero of mine. I got to work with him and be around him, you know? And, you know, a, a shout out also. Um, um, I texted him the other day and he was sad to hear about this and we were great friends, uh, Jeff Seitz. So Jeff Seitz is Stuart's number one guy and he's been there forever. And uh, they're probably, no, they're, he's one of the world's top drum techs and he's very responsible for me owning the Stuart Copeland signature kit. So a shout out to Jeff. Uh, I like to give credit where credit's due. And there's a lot of people responsible and have witnessed to me getting, uh, uh, getting equipment and my parents at home are hurting me and they I wouldn't be a drummer without them I wouldn't be a drummer without them I wouldn't be who I am without them you know getting me drum lessons and, and letting me play in the lounge when, when people are trying to eat dinner and watch TV they encourage me the whole time not once ever did my parents redirect me away from drums the opposite the opposite and the Paiste connection, my parents may or may not remember, um, they brought John Wadham's hi-hats, his Paiste hi-hats over with them when they came to visit in their suitcase. And it was the most amazing gift ever to be reacquainted with um, John's hi-hats. And now they're gone and I'm hurting. In fact, I just remembered uh, David Cleary, if you see this, uh, I used to teach him, we're, we're good friends, haven't spoke to you in a little while. You showed up at my cottage in Ireland. I had the cottage for teaching and you brought a picture of John. And I, I think that's gone. Picture of John uh, behind the kids smoking the pipe, you know? And it, it hurts, guys. This stuff hurts. So, uh, yeah, I swore. So what? Sue me for that, Guitar Center. Because it's not my swearing you want to be worried about. I love you all, guys. Thanks ever so much. I have so much to do. I'm I, when I tell you I'm overwhelmed. Uh, one day I'm probably gonna do a little. I'm gonna do a documentary about that. I'm speaking to some filmmakers. They're interested, and and we'll put some positive stuff in it because out of this I'm helping other people. I'm finding other gear. I'm finding stories. I'm finding circumstance in uh, in Guitar Center. This is showing up a bigger thing. I got to speak to the mayor of Nashville today. I have to speak to the police commissioner again. Honestly, if I could show you, I have six attorneys that uh, I don't even know who they are. I got the copy. It's a lot. And of course, I got to keep things uh, going a little bit. Anybody know anywhere I could get drum lessons? Because I'm, I'm not playing that well. I'm not really playing that well at all. I'm really not. So I'll have to try and find that. Um, thanks ever so much, guys. I can't thank you enough. Please keep sharing this. Share this live feed. Share it to people you think is relative uh, all over the world because this is connected all over the world. Um, I'm going to go now and get a coffee and process all this and get back with all these people. It's, uh, check in with Nicole, see how she's doing. And that's it. I love you all. Let's win this. Let's win the bigger picture. Let's get justice. Um, thanks ever so much. And here's to at least... Uh, Stuart Copeland kit coming home um, soon and I'm still fighting on reverb to try and trace uh, the Letterman kit and there's a great story to that too and I had planned to video the Letterman kit and do a thing because actually working with Tim Shahadi, working with Paisley, Tana, there's a great story um, for all of us and Stuart for, um, uh, for that, that show um, it was amazing to be asked and actually I remember giving video and, and pictures to Stuart and he was delighted um, because when you do these things they happen real quick and they're like oh we didn't get but of course me being me I documented it all you know and I was able to give Stuart um, if you see a picture of him behind the kit on the Letterman show I took that I took that picture which is kind of cool but even cooler to own the kit but they sold the kit for nothing guys and it was sold for like three grand on reverb my heart 
I can feel it pulled to the left. My heart hurts. You know, somebody's out there playing the drums he, he and I played. I actually played them before him, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> um, and actually, we had a conversation a few years ago in New York. He kind of was like, oh, I love that kit. And we kind of talked about him getting it back. And I went, no, no, it stays with me. So here's... Uh, whether you pray or you meditate or whatever it is you do, you know, send that into the universe for me that there's a good chance we locate uh, the Letterman kit. At least that's three of all the kits that could come back home to me. They're, the Phil Collins kit's already really lived in my heart. Haven't played it yet. But uh, so I want to thank Evans and Vic Fert and Paisley, um, uh, Jewelist, Drum Dots, uh, Earthworks Microphones. You know, all those guys are amazing. Um, Kick Pro Pillow in, in LA. Um, you know, there's, you know, Steve Logmeyer at Evans and, and, and uh, John at Drum Dots in New York. You know, I'm really lucky to have these awesome people. Just, what can we do for you, It's pretty amazing. So we should do that for each other. Thanks, guys. I gotta go. Uh, thanks for listening. Please, please, please share. Give me your input. Give me your feedback. And also, if ever I can help you, I'm back in that zone, man. I'm able to help you again. So um, lastly, take care of yourselves and everyone around you.